Hello, my name's Peter Stanton, and I'm here at the bigger shop um, today. It's a Saturday, and there's uh, there's really nobody here today because it's the work is kind of slow in Houston at the moment, and so everybody's off. And I, I was working on some parts on the horizontal mill here for the mill stop fixture, in particular clamps and such. And I did this little setup with this washer to clamp the or, or to you know for the nut on the preload of the bearings. And this kind of setup is pretty commonly used in the machine shop. And uh, I wanted to show it just to, for people that may not have seen this kind of a setup and how it works. And, and uh, this washer, let's see if I can get this to focus on this. This washer is just a thin little part. It's kind of hard to hold on to. It would be hard to turn this in a lathe. And, and you can mill this pretty easily. And I also needed this little um, here, this tang to go in the key of the shaft because this is going to be bent up to lock the nut to keep it from backing off when I set the preload of the bearings. So I'm going to go through this little um, uh, setup the, and, and I'm showing you in the video so you get the idea of how at least I normally do these things. And I think it's a sort of a good way to do it. So let's get to the video and you can see what's happening here. Okay, here we are preparing the part the stock of the fixture actually, not the part, but the fixture, by uh, milling the first edge of the material just to get it straight, deburr it on the bench here, and then go back in the vise and put it uh, on the other edge so we can uh, get the two sides parallel so we can clamp it in the jaws properly. So that's all we're doing, nothing critical here, just get it parallel and flat debird a little bit more and we're gonna open the vise up so that we can get the stock in there and put the parallels in. I use uh, magnets on the parallels for my uh, in the horizontal mill because it uh, obviously the top parallel would just fall down without something holding it up so the magnets work pretty good here. Put the part in for the fixture, tap it down, come in here with the face mill and just skim the top off flat so we have a nice clean surface to start with here and we're going to probe the center of that piece of stock with the spindle probe to put our part zero right in the center and on, on the top of the, the z-axis on the top of the material and I think I added the thickness of the stock to back the z out to the z-offset when I did that so that's just probing the X, and here's probing the Y axis, and then the Z. And so we're done with the probe. Now this is just um, uh, showing the programming to, to drill and tap the five holes in the fixture. I sped this up quite a bit because, you know, it's a little bit boring to see programming, but what I was impressed with when I watched it actually sped up like this was how many steps you actually go through that you don't realize when you're programming till you actually watch a video of it to see all the things you have to actually enter and do it's kind of amazing you don't even realize it when you do it how much you actually are doing there so that's that's just to drill and tap the five holes the four quarter twenty holes and one half thirteen hole in the center so that we can uh, clamp the raw stock down basically so we can uh, the, that's the parts being milled out of here so that's all that's showing I think that's sped up a thousand times or a thousand percent and uh, upload the program to the machine after a few little edits in the program and here's the machining the holes um, I think these machining sequences in this video are sped up 500% really because you can't see too much with the coolant and everything on this kind of a machine so I sped it up but I think you're getting the idea watching this anyway to see you know the machining so Drilled the center hole for the half 13 tap. This is the 203 drill 
for the um, quarter 20 tap being done here and then we're going to tap the half 13 and then the quarter 20 holes right now spraying WD-40 on there for the tap that seems to work pretty good in aluminum forgot I had the coolant turned on there I'd turn it off and blow it off again so there's the quarter 20 holes being tapped now here's the stock it's a piece of 16 gauge steel and clamp it on here with a couple of cant twist clamps just to hold it so that we can put four holes in it for the um, quarter 20 screws to hold it down so you gotta get it lined up reasonably well but it, it does it's not that critical it just has to cover those holes and have enough stock so the part can be got out of it so that, you know that's kind of ideal for this kind of setup just you just got to cover up where the machining is going to be taking place. You don't have to worry too much about the size of the stock. I, I just cut the stock with an abrasive saw out of a piece of sheet and then deburred it on the belt sander. Here I'm just kind of double checking to make sure I'm not going to hit anything when I go in here to mill these four holes in the stock. So make sure the clamps are tight. Come back in the I think this is a 3 16 end mill, just milling, uh, I think the holes were 265 in diameter, so clear the bolts. I stopped it a few times to see what I was doing, and also so you can kind of see, if I turn the coolant off, so you kind of see what's happening. As you see, there's so much coolant, you can hardly see anything with these deals. And this is the programming of the actual part. Here again, I sped this up so we wouldn't have to go through all of this. But what it does is it roughs the inside, and then it mills the finishes mills the inside with a 364 sand mill. And then we're going to put a bolt with a washer, a half 13 screw with a washer to hold it down, and then mill the uh, outside off off the material off of the the part so it's round like a washer. So that's all there is to it really. I'm going to upload the program. Here's screwing down the the part to the fixture, the stock after the four holes were put in it. And screw it down and then remove the clamps. Get ready to mill it. Here's the first end mill. I think this is a 3 16 end mill as well. Um, it's coming down to rough out the center bore. I ran this down in single block and stopped it here because it's a new tool and I wanted to check to make sure my offsets are right. So I put something in there so I can see that. That was a one, two, three block. The tool's stopping I'm one inch above the material. So that's a, you can get an eyeball on that and kind of get an idea. This is also a new tool so I checked it again. It's a 364 end mill which roughs out these little the little notches next to the tab in the middle of the bore are a sixteenth of an inch wide so I had to use a, a 364 sand mill to mill all this this big mill only turns 6,000 rpm so it's not really perfect for this little teeny end mill but it does alright I turned the coolant off here so we can kinda see what's happening here it's just roughing out those notches and finish milling the bore and the tab. And checking the diameter of it to make sure it goes over my uh, shaft. Deburr it a little bit here with the file. Put the washer and screw on here and take off the quarter 20 screws. There. And then uh, come in with a uh, an end mill and just mill the OD round and that's really all there is to it. This isn't a real good way to do a production run of these but to, I made two two of them so I'd have an extra one. Only really need one. So that's that's it right there and the part is more or less finished although it turns out 
I decided to um, mill a very shallow counterbore in the opposite side of the part, which you'll see later, in order to uh, because the the washer falls right into the thread relief of my uh, shaft, and so I needed a, a little bit extra. Um, I don't know how to put it to hold the hold the thing concentric with a nut and fortunately when I made my nut I put a little straight turn on each end of the nut that was uh, one inch in diameter and about 25 thousandths long and so I, I, I milled a little teeny counterbore in the back of the washer that's one inch diameter so it lines up on the nut so that the washer won't fall into the thread relief because it happens to end up right where the thread relief of the of the threads are on the shaft and I was concerned that it, it wouldn't actually uh, be, you know, s secure enough to keep the nut from turning, possibly, when it's all assembled. So that's what I did there.